Winston Green, one of my places in the 90s. I like Winston Green. I went from Walton Block to Winston Green Block. When I first went into Walton, you had this horrible governor, big heavy set governor, manhandled us all and that, you know, proper dealt with us. And then he moved out to Walton Prison and went to Birmingham Prison. So he was familiar with us. So when we're going off our barnets and walking, the governors are trying to get rid of us. And no jails accepting, you know, because we've been in the system for ages. But he'd only accept us from segregation unit to segregation unit. Wow. It's there for a month. Only got out of there because there was a court date. Winston Green, been there twice actually, mate. Went there on a little mad offence and then went there on me on this murder offence, mate, on the conspiracy to murder, went to Birmingham. Got a security ship out, ended up in Birmingham. Landed on reception, all security all over me. You're not meant to be in this prison. I don't know who's allowed you into here, but you're not meant to be here. This is the second time, this is a different governor, security governor. Well, why? He went, you've got issues with some of my inmates. I believe you're going to ruin the good order and discipline of this establishment if you remain in this prison. We need to ship you out immediately. Why are you saying who's what, 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 what? Do you know anyone called Roy Hickman? No. You don't know Roy Hickman from Liverpool? I haven't got a clue who he is. Why? He's in this jail. He's in Birmingham, heard I've landed, and ran to the screws and goes, he got that and she, didn't even know that, never even heard of me from life, I'm not lying, mate. Here he is all of a sudden saying he's got issues with me in this Birmingham. And he's having it with the Asian kids on the wing. And to keep me sweet, they put me on the induction wing. Because they put me out straight away, no other jail's accepting me. So I've landed here, placed on the induction wing. They won't let me go off the wing other than letting me go to the gym twice a day with these groups of people. So when I'm going to the gym twice a day, I've got like a semi clean. They're just letting me out my door on the wing, giving me freelance of the wing and letting me go to the gym twice a day. No, keeping me sweet sort of shook a little bit. So I go to the gym, these Asian kids come over to me. Well, they don't really approach me, because they see me training, I'm from heavy trainer, you know, circuit training, power training. So they send like one of the boys over, have you got an issue with Roy? I'm going, look, is he? Don't even know who he is, tell him to come over tomorrow. I'm trying to get him to the sports hall so I can see who he is and speak to him. Just start, all of a sudden, I can't go to the gym now. I'm sending threats from the gym. This <laughs> is what's going on with me. He was some scatty lad. Fucking Roy Hickey, mate. Didn't even know who he was. Learned who he was later on, like, do you understand? Before I went to jail, I had this little bird. I got her when she was brand new. Around my age. I was about, don't know, like two or three years in it. And... You know, it is what it is, we've met each other, me, Craig, someone else met her, her and her, gone to her Mars in Crosby, whatever. I've ended up getting with her, a year down the line I'm engaged to her or something. And then I've ended up in this and ended up going to jail. And when I've gone to jail, this Roy Hickey and all that, I've started taking the piss out of this bird. So he's had this mad thing against me without me knowing for years. And now he's come across me in the prison system. You understand what I mean? Mad that, innit? How did he even get onto that story? Yeah, so I've been, that's, someone mentioned me going to Birmingham. And that's where I was in Birmingham, right? They stopped me going to the gym because of that. So we had to start training on the exercise yard every day. So a lot of the lads will remember me because it was a, a big scouser on the yard doing a circuit every day. Because I stopped going from the gym. 
And then from there, I got Shanghai. To Where did I go after that? Doncaster. In Doncaster, mate. <laughs> Debbie Hughes, ever been to Donny here? Last of the month. They just look at you firing half of these prisons and go, the hell get him out of here. <laughs> That's what they think straight away. That's what prison's like, you know, people. I've turned up to prisons and they've looked at my file at reception and went, get him back on that bus. And I've had to go back to the prison that sent me. I'm not lying, mate. Just because they look at your security file. So you'll have security files like this, 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 this. Because I've been in prison since 13, my file's like that. And the majority of me initial sentences and me remands were just volatile. Screws are getting it, inmates are getting it, wings are getting smashed up. You know, proper naughty kids. You mature later though, don't you? But it's all held against you. So basically, when you're a kid, if you'd had an issue on the wing, you would get the screws, you just burst in the kid's pad, get him with the pool, whatever. The longer you're in the system, you become more calculated. So now you can damage this kid in a serious way. If there's, especially in the Victorian prisons, the cameras are just inadequate. The new ones, the cameras can get you jail. The old ones, Victorian jails, great. But the longer you're in the system, the more you're able to understand the dynamics and sh So you can guess someone, leave them in a mess for three or four hours and the screws haven't even done a count yet. And the only time you recognise them is when they've done a count. And you meet some sick mother, you know, in the prison system. And you, you know when you're a YP, this is what, this is what I've noticed. You know when you're a YP and you're you're a naughty YP like me and Danny was, and you're getting to all the YPs up and down the country, you're mixing with all sorts of fruit loops from these parts of the country, and at that moment in time you can tell the tact, you can tell the dangerous, but they haven't done no crime that's tapped or dangerous yet. Do you understand? But years down the line, a decade down the line, you're seeing them splattered all over the news. Doing madness. <laughs> so there was one kid, and I'd done Wellington House with him. And when I first done Wellington House with him, he were a bit racist. There was no racism in this kid on his first sentence, because he was with me in this Wellington House. But for some reason, he developed this hatred. You've developed a deep racist hatred. And the next time I seen him was in Stoke Heat years later or something. And now he's got a SWAT sticker drawn on his fod, tattooed on his fod, and he's got all this mat on him. His name was Robbie. Some little scrawny kid. And at this time, every cell was cell share. So if you went into jail, whether you liked it or not, you're going in a cell with a few people in it and you couldn't say. And you would have a racist in with a, a black lad. You'd have so anti-Muslim kid in with a Muslim kid. And it could go off and it could get on and there was assaults in the cells all the time and there was fights in the cells because they're not assessing these inmates to see what the history is like. They're just lodging them in cells with people with mad ideologies and there's pure madness going on. So this Robert, who's normally up north, because he's all this, for some reason, the system sent him down south. He, did, he hated the authorities, he hated all my kids, so the screws hated him, all right? And he was always having beef with the screws. He was only a scrawny kid, but tapped. Always had been since the first time I've seen him. So what they've done, they've sent him down south. And when they've landed down south, he's having the hated Asians. Hated them. Proper racist kid, right? And he's got they've sent him down south and put him in a jail in London. And it's heavily populated London with Asians and African Caribbeans and When you go into the prison system down there, 
it's rare to see a white kid in some prisons. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not rare, it's just, it's like you're the minority on some wings, basically. This kid, this racist kid, has been put in a jail and locked up with an Asian lad. While the Asian lad's being a kid, years ago in prison, you used to have these wooden tables and the legs were thick as and when you pull them off, it had a bolt in them like this. Big bolts that kept them all together. And when you pull the table legs off, it was just a lethal weapon. That rob has gone to town on the Asian kid. Made them. Made them. Crazy mother... On the back of that, Right throughout the prison establishment, they started doing cell share risk assessments on everyone that came into the prison system. As soon as they brought that in, I just manipulated the system. I went, yeah, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'm that. And he just went, single cell. <laughs> it helped though, because in Walton a few years before, I'd weighed a pad meeting and it was all over me file. So now when I'm telling these with this, with this, that's happened with this kid who's killed his pad mates and he never done a risk assessment, people are getting held accountable. So they've rushed in this new risk assessment that they do on every single kid that goes into prison now. They'll sit them down and they'll ask them the, the pivotal questions. Are you racist? Are you this? Are you that? Are you that? Are you that? And if you get so many ticks on that sheet of paper, they will evaluate you as high risk cell share. And if you're high risk cell share, you get a single cell. And a single cell in some prisons is like gold dust. So I went right through my jail in a single cell. The only time I had pad mates, I picked them. So whilst I was on remand, I think I had Whilst I was on remand for my conspiracy to murder, I was on remand for two and a half years, and I had three pad mates the whole time. I had one pad mate in Walton for a short period, which was Chaddy, some kid who used to chill with us before I went scatty, from Scotty. Then when I've been in strange ways, I had Mark Richardson, who was me cold D, in my cell with me. He got acquitted. Got lifed off a few years later for the Mikey Wright murder. And Wes Brown, when Wes has landed in the prison, I've said to the SO, bang him in myself for a few months. And we were just grappling. So we got parted, we couldn't go in the same cell because we were just rolling around grappling and that. You know, every night the big thumping on the wing, boom, boom, me and Wes bouncing off the walls. <laughs> Everyone screaming, are you fighting? Me and we're sweating, grappling. And then every other time, right, right through it, every single prison I went to, single cell. You had some rough prisons, you know, don't give about assessments and they're trying to force the issue on you. And you've just got to, you've just got to go ghetto with them. You know, you've just got to tell them straight on reception. <laughs> And they find you a single cell. They try and pressure you out of it. We've got a space over there and a big double. You know, when you're on the induction wing and there's some little pad, not getting your gym, not getting this. They leave you on there for months trying to psychologically persuade you to take a double. Oof. I can't live with myself, never mind some other. Do you understand what I'm saying to these people? <laughs> La la la